Hello everyone and welcome to the third Coco programming tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can design our interface using Xcode 4. And then in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can link your interface with your code. So I'm splitting these two tutorials up just because they take a long time to explain both of these things. So uh, that are going to be separate tutorials. So the first thing I have to get out of the way is unrelated to both of those topics, but it's all related to every program that we make. So uh, what it is, is memory management in Cocoa applications. And you've, if you don't know what memory management is in Objective-C, then um, I highly suggest either checking out my tutorials on Objective-C or any other resource that you can find for memory management in Objective-C and more specifically the retain count system that they have. So with that said, if you've ever developed or even tried to develop any iOS or little Objective-C command line tools, then you would know that iOS, you always have to use retain counts and anytime you alloc copy your new an object, then you always have to release it somehow. And that's technically the retain count system. And you know that the three main methods that you ever use are release, retain, and auto release. So you get what I'm talking about. And if you've done any of this stuff, you know how anytime you do create these objects, you got to get rid of them. So in Coco, we have two options. In iOS, you only have that one. So in Coco, we have the option of using retain counts, like I just was talking about. And if you, again, if you don't know what they are, check out some tutorials for that. And Coco gives us the ability to use what's known as garbage collection. So garbage collection will, in layman's terms, just any object that's not being used anymore, it can get rid of its memory. So anytime it realizes that nothing is being pointed to or that memory is no longer being used, it will just free up that memory and now we have the memory back. So we don't have to worry about um, releasing objects back into memory. So garbage collection is very, very nice in Coco. And you'll never notice any speed difference between uh, if you're worried about, like, you know, the, the garbage collector being too bad or whatever, or slowing down your program. For any of these tutorials we do, you'll never notice a single difference using garbage collection. So I hi highly advise uh, trying it out for these tutorials. And uh, I'm not going to be using, or I'm not going to be, uh, showing you how to manually manage this memory, so I'm always going to be using the garbage collection. So if you're wondering why you don't see any releases or retains in here, uh, the reason is I'm using garbage collection. So um, it doesn't become default though for Cocoa applications. We actually have to enable garbage collection. So in order to enable garbage collection, we got to go up to the build settings up here, and this is under our project. So go into the build settings and make sure that the All button is uh, clicked right here. If it's not, uh, Basic's probably the default, but make sure All is selected or else you're not gonna find this option. So go ahead and type in Garb and just sort for Garbage Collection. And now you can see that we have Garbage Collection and right here it shows that it's unsupported, which means that we would be using Retain Counts. However, we want to turn this on to Required because we want our garbage collection to be required. We want it to work or turn it on, whatever. So that, that just setting that to required will now turn on the garbage collector and we don't have to worry about ma manually ma uh, managing any of our memory. So with that said, now we can go on to designing our interface. So here, um, this is basically the interface builder of Xcode 4. And I'm just going to cover a few things here quickly. Um, if you want to change your canvas that you have right here, you can go up to the editor menu, go to canvas, and you can actually change the background color of it. So if you want to make it checkered like this, you can do that. There's a few other options as well. I just thought I'd throw that in this tutorial for the sake of it. So anyway, with that out of the way, um, let's cover a few of the objects that are down in our workbench over here. So um, I'm not going to cover the top three. These are all proxy objects, and I'll get into what all that stuff means later. But uh, this, for now, you don't have to worry about what these top three objects do. You just have to be concerned about what's below the line. And even that, we don't have to worry about all these as well. 
So here, the first option is our main menu, and as you can see, it's represented by a little menu bar. And the next one is the window, which is just our application window. And then after that, well, at least in the next tutorial, we'll talk about um, creating app controllers, which are just object instances. So our app controllers will control all, or will connect to the interface that we build. So with that said, let's uh, actually get designing here. So click on your window, and that's just this right here. Click on the window, and for this tutorial and the next, all we're going to do is make a very simple application that will have a button and a label. And when the button is pressed, a label will display some text. So all we have to do is figure out how to add a button and a label to this window. So here, I'm just resizing my window because I'm not going to need it to be ginormous or anything. All I have is a label and a button. So now, all I have to do is figure out how to add these objects. So go over to the view heading over here and go on to this right button, which is the utilities area button or the utilities view window, whatever you want to call it. And this will bring you with all the utilities that are available uh, to us. So um, let's say we want to add, like I said before, a button and a label to this window. So what we can do is go down to our bottom right here, and we can see that um, under the Objects tab right here, and you can see that there's a bunch of different tabs, but the one that we want is the Object Library tab, and it'll show you all the different objects that are available in Coco. So these objects we get for free, and we can nicely just drag into our window and use them. So. As you can see, we want a button as our first object we want to throw in here. So all the buttons are actually nicely located at the top, but you can also search for button or different items at the bottom. So here we have a push button, a gradient button, and you know all these other buttons. But the only button that uh, really matters, or we have all these buttons, and uh, it doesn't actually, none of them are any different from the next. Um, they might look different, but they're actually all the same class. So all of them behave uh, generally the same way. So what we can do is we can just take a button, and I'm just going to zoom out for this, and we can just grab the button and drag it over to our interface. So here you go, we got our button now on our window, and there you go, so it's a button. You may have also noticed when you are dragging that over that there are these guidelines that show up, and they're just kind of there to help you uh, position your objects so that they're not too close to surrounding objects. So for example, uh, we probably wouldn't want to have a button in the bottom right corner like this because that is kind of awkward to press. If I press on the wrong side of it, like if I miss it and I click it over here, then I'm, you know, I'm going to be clicking the window behind it or missing our application. So it's better to have your button somewhere in the center. Now there might be cases where you know you go against these guidelines, but these are just general guidelines that you have to position your objects. So with that in place, you now have this nice button, and um, the guidelines will show you kind of where to put it. So now we can also expand this button if we want, and you can see this by looking at the edges of this button. You'll see the little circles, and I can grab these circles, and they will just expand my object. And you can see again the nice guidelines that show up when we uh, go too far to the edges. So now I can also relabel this button just by double clicking on the button and now I can say um, you know, say something or maybe I'll just say say hello. That's you know hello world. You get the idea. So there we go. We're just gonna have a button that says say hello. And it's not going to do anything yet, obviously, because it's not connected to any code, but it is a button on our nice little window. So now that's all we want to do for the button, but now we want to go over and add a label. So we can do this by going back down here, and all we want to do is type in label at the bottom. So type in label, and as you can see, we get a label object. And we also get a wrapping label, but the label is what we really want. So go ahead and drag this label over to our window, and drag it and drop it wherever you would uh, like it to be. 
So now we're also going to expand this label to the edges as well, just so that our text can fully fit on to the label. If it's too small, if the label is too small, then the text will just kind of, it won't fill, if, for example, if our, if our label size is only this large, any lettering after our label ends uh, won't appear. So we want the label to be large enough so that we can see all the text. So that's why we expand the label um, to at least as long as we need it. So there we go, we just expanded our label to the edges of our program, should be big enough for whatever text we have to put in there. And now we want to get this label to be aligned in the center, because right now, you know, we don't really want our label on the left side, we want it right in the middle. So how do we do this without actually doing this in code? Well, the nice way is using Interface Builder. And there are tons of different inspectors over here, and we'll get into one of them, which is called the Attributes Inspector. And the Attributes Inspector changes basically any attribute of your label, or any object that you have selected, I should say. So, for example, over here in our top right, and maybe I'll zoom in a bit more, we have right here, which is known as our Attributes Inspector. And you'll notice as you hover over different ones, they'll give you different names of different inspectors, and we'll cover probably all these inspectors in due time, but right now I'm just going to talk about the Attributes Inspector. So as you can see in the Attributes Inspector, we have the alignment right here, and we can change the alignment to what we want it to be. So we want our object, or our label, to be aligned right in the center. So we're going to select the Align in Center button. And as you can see now over with our label, our label is right in the center of our program. So that's really nice, and now we have our entire interface built right there. So that's all we really wanted to do, and the next tutorial will really get into how this connects to our code. Now, for now, let's just go ahead and run this though to make sure that we've done everything correctly. I don't think we can really screw it up, but let's just see that it works. And as you can see, we get a nice little window with a label and a button, and we can click the button. But of course, nothing happens because we don't have any code with it. So anyway, that was uh, the, this is the tutorial on just building your interface, and we'll get into more uh, interface builder elements as well as we go on. But this is just your general overview of how you can add objects into a window. And just remember that all these tutorials from now on are going to be using garbage collection. Just remember that as well. So anytime uh, you, you start a new tutorial, just remember to uh, enable your garbage collector. So anyway, that was uh, pretty much all I had for this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we'll learn, we'll, we will learn how to connect our objects that we have in our interface to our um, controller class that we're going to create in code. So code connection to objects sounds like fun and that will be fun. So if you have any questions, please leave your questions in the comments below and subscribe to the channel if you like these tutorials. And I'm trying to make uh, as much as I can here with uh, the time that I have. So anyway, um, I'll see you next tutorial.